This video is made possible thanks to the support from my patrons and is also inexplicably sponsored by ChannelFireball.com. Okay. Alright. Hello, spicy people of the internet. Spice 8 Rack here, aka I need to talk about the Cats movie. Last night, I saw the Cats movie. I, w I had no intention of seeing the Cats movie. It was just kind of one of those things that happened. A friend of mine like sent me a message and said, hey, do you want to come see Cats? And I was like, you know what? I've got a free ticket. I might as well go and see it. I, I have never seen a worse movie in my entire limited existence on this material plane. I have never watched a movie that has so physically harmed me, so emotionally bored me, so spiritually drained me, and so aesthetically confused me, and so overall saddened me. Leaving that theater felt like I had lied in, I'd laid in bed for like two weeks, not doing anything but eating Ben and Jerry's from out of the tub, and like falling in and out of sleep at random intervals throughout the day. It felt like I'd just woken out of that, and wasn't ready to leave my house. It was the wor- it was dreadful. But what actually happens in the Cats movie? I- I have never been a fan of Cats. I've never seen Cats. I don't know what all of the- the plot points are. I can't remember most of the people's names. But I came into this with like a fresh, you know what? I don't know anything about this. Let's give this a go. And this movie is bizarre. The opening shot is of a, a cab in London, and immediately you're met with the body horror of the cats as they clamber down the walls like xenomorph, as this cab turns up to this alleyway and throws a cat in a bag into the alleyway. Uh, the cats rip it open. Victoria, our main character maybe, there's like 400 characters in this movie, pops out of the bag. They all start singing about how cats are like, they can be effable and ineffable. And all of the cats, they begin dancing and it the, the 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 kind of like the emotional explosion that i was expecting from seeing th seeing these cat people seeing these cat people for the first time on screen what i had expected was for that like shock value to carry through at least most of the movie it doesn't it wears off in like the first 20 seconds it just looks bizarre, and not in a way that's interesting. Anywho, I want to go through the movie. So we get to uh, the, f the first song. Um, uh, these are all the Jellicle Cats. This is what we do. Um, and next, next we move on to uh, the name song, which I think is the most important song in the movie? Maybe. I think it has like a lot to do with the ending, but I'm not entirely sure it's... It's all about how cats have three names, which first off means that uh, Skullduggery Pleasant, a uh, book series that I loved as a child, ripped cats off. That's hilarious. Um, but cats have three names. There's the one that uh, owners call the cats. Um, it's the one that, like, the cats use. And then I can't actually remember what the third one is. I think it might have been, like, their true name or something. I, d I don't know, honestly. It was, it was cats. That's, it's cats. So they do this song about how you gotta have a name. Uh, Victoria doesn't change her name throughout the whole thing. Uh, she doesn't like by the end of the song go, oh, I'm, yeah, my owners called me Victoria, but I'm actually Ramble Snam Balamba Bam or something like that. It's no, she's just Victoria throughout the whole thing. So that song has literally no meaning or basis in like the grander narrative. Anyway, third song, Rebel Wilson's there. God, Rebel Wilson sucks in this movie. Her entire thing, in fact, her and James Gordon's entire thing, her, their entire shtick is that they're, uh, they're fat and that we should laugh at that. And like uh, Rebel Wilson's whole thing is she's fat because she's lazy and James Gordon's is he's fat because he's eat. He he's eats, he's eat. This, so this fucking movie has ruined my brain. James Corden is fat because he eats, and and Rebel Wilson's song, she she begins singing about how she loves her life, just like hanging out, lying on places, and just like relaxing. Every time she lies down, she falls over, and I think it's supposed to be played for laughs, but it's so hollow of all comedic timing, meaning, and merit that it it's just someone falling over. It, that can be funny, but the very, the very act of someone falling over isn't a hilarious thing. 
So she, her her song is notable for one reason, and that's the we get introduced to the child actors of the movie. So the child act there are child actors in this movie. Uh, they're not in any of the trailers, and for good reason, because I think that people would have burnt down cinemas if they knew what was being played there. Uh, the child actors play mice. At one point, uh, Rebel Wilson sings about how like she catches mice and then re reveals a curtain, and we zoom in to these tiny, tiny mice dancing on top of a thimble, singing about, I don't know, how like cool Rebel Wilson's character is, or something along those lines. The proportions are completely off. The mice are so small in comparison to the um, uh, the adults, the the cats. They're not they're not adults. They're cats. This is cats. The movie. The proportions are so bizarre and so off kilter. You've got these tiny, tiny mice uh, children actors, but then later in the song, you get and like it, I could feel the mood in the audience like like sink when this happened. Right when the mice are introduced. Rebel Wilson sings, and there are these mice, or something to that effect, and opens up the curtains and there's mice, and they're horrifying and everyone, everyone disliked that. But then, a little bit later, Rebel Wilson says, but if we consider the cockroaches, and begins going towards like a tablecloth, and I could feel everyone in the audience, like, get ready and recoil, because they, they were like, oh no, Oh no, there are cockroach child actors! And you know what? There are cockroach child actors! There are cockroaches, and they were the same size as the mouse! This is the, the mice! This is what I mean when the, the proportions were way off. The mice were the exact same size as the cockroaches. It was just uncomfortable, and one of the cockroaches gets eaten. At one point, uh, Rebel Wilson's like backup dancers are singing uh, her song for her, because she's lazy, and she just grabs one of the cockroaches and just bites its fucking head off! And the cockroaches are doing like this line dance, and they just keep going. They keep- and it's a child's head! It's a child's head! She bites off a child's head, and then discards the body like it's a- like it's a- 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 a used hanky chief! So, the, that ends. That song ends. Thank God. Um, but then, then we get introduced to McCavity, who is played by Idris Elba, and is- Deeply, deeply, like, does not want to be there. Uh, you could tell there is sadness behind his glowing green eyes. There's another film you're in that ev everybody is obsessed with right now, and it's Cats. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we got um, Rebel Wilson's song ends, and we move on to Jason Derulo's song. Uh, I forgot Jason Derulo was actually in this movie, but, uh, but towards the end. He has one song and no plot relevance, which is the majority of the characters in all fairness. But he has a song about how he, uh, he only likes things if you, if you don't like things. Um, or like, you know, if you give me cream, I want milk. If you give me milk, I want cream. That's the entire song, but with two different things. Or he's, he's a fucking, like, he's a picky cat. We get it. We don't need a fucking song for it. But as he's singing, Rebel Wilson keeps heckling him with cat puns. Like, they go into a milk bar and she shouts, You're milking it now! Or something to that effect. Uh, he hits a high note, and she like she whispers to another cat, "Oh, I think he got neutered." And it's I know that's not in the original uh, musical because the original musical is like uh, this psychedelic experimentalist. I don't even know like pastiche on on the nature of what we can consider art in the first place. And this was just a fucking this. It was just cats, baby. So we have the milk song. No! And then uh, McCavity shows up and uh, talks to Rebel Wilson whilst everyone else is like moving on to the next song because it's non-fucking-stop. Every song goes into the next song, goes into the next song. There is no tonal, like, lows. It's just song, song, song. And it's all synth. All of the music is synth. They didn't use an orchestra for anything except for, like, memory. Everything else was a fucking guitar. It was unbelievable. Like, you have millions of dollars 
and you're remaking cats using this new technology, this new, like, fur technology. We've used digital fur technology. Anyway, we get introduced to McCavity, because everyone's moving on to James Corden's song. We'll talk about James Corden in a bit. McCavity shows up, and he says, oh, Rebel Wilson, you deserve to be on stage. And Rebel Wilson's like, oh, thank you, McCavity. And then McCavity's like, yeah, I can see your name on lights or on posters. And then he points to a wall that has a wanted poster of McCavity on it. And Rebel Wilson looks from that to him, as if like, oh, it's you. And like, bro, like, do you, do, can you remember faces? That poster is outside your house. That you see it every day. How did you not know that this was a McCavity? So the McCavity then like, traces his hand around her head and she disappears in a puff of smoke. <laughs> So that was like, I like couldn't get over that for like the first like a good like five minutes afterwards. Like he just Thanos snaps out of existence. And we're so, and this is in the middle of like the first half of James Corden's song. It's like, w w are we not going to address the fact that McCavity can just dis a fucking peer people? So James Corden's song. James Corden's song is all about how he's fat and he eats a lot. That's his song. That's all of the comedy in the song. At one point, um, you know the bit in the trailer where like James Corden is standing on a seesaw and someone jumps on the seesaw and he gets like, he jumps into the air and it looks like the same kind of jumping that they have in Hidden Tri Hidden Tiger Crouching Dragon or whatever. The look, this, br this movie has ruined my brain! The same kind of jumping they have in Crouchy Tiger Hidden Dragon uh, and he flies into the bin. Well, in the movie, uh, someone jumps on it and then and then nothing happens, and the music stops, and then James Corden looks at that person and goes, Right, well that's not going to work, is it? <laughs> that's what I say to you. <laughs> and he again goes into this tirade about how we're gonna need to get more cats up here because you've really upset me. And it's it's like the it's like the writers were trying to have their cake and eat it in the way that we we are going to have this song, which is all about how round and fat this cat is. And the moment, the moment that like we address it we show how round and fat this cat is, we're now going to lampshade how bad it is. How bad it is to mock someone about their weight. Oh, oh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't make fun of James Corden's weight. He's sensitive to his weight, you know. Fuck off. Fuck off. The man eats trash. Anyway, so his song ends with him like being tempted by McCavity to jump into more garbage and then the garbage disappears and he disappears um, and like he just it's like that he's just gone. He's gone from the movie now. Everyone's run away and then Scrimble, Shanks and Fuckwad, I can't remember any of their names, they turn up and they kidnap Victoria and they go around a house. It's the most like unimportant song in the entire like movie and that's saying something. There are some unimportant tracks in this but that whole thing is oh we steal and break things on per we cause problems on purpose and that's our song and then they leave that's it and then the magic cat oh shit the magic cat there's a magic cat okay there's a magic cat uh he's the one that wears the top hat and has all the like um the shillings on his uh jacket he turns up uh at the end of scrimble shanks and P pissy boy uh their song uh and because the victoria is about to get eaten by a dog who thank god we never see because i don't want to see like the horror i don't i don't want to see fucking like jeremy irons horrible face superimposed upon a fucking beagle i don't need that in my life so they uh magic cat saves the day closes the door throws a pulls a bone from out of his hat throws it to the dog uh they run off because now it's the time to introduce uh, old Deuteronomy, um, and old Deuteronomy turns up, and it's, it's, it's Dame Judy Dench, and she, she looks weird, and that's compared to the other CGI cats. Her legs are bizarre. They are like they are full on cat legs. Everyone else kind of has cat legs, but it's mainly human legs, right? It's just furry human legs. She has like full on cat legs, like, like a tiny, tiny paws and thick, thick. But thighs. She looks like Aslan, but someone has like upped the content aware scale on and she's just like all of her limbs are wrong and her face is incorrect. She turns up and everyone's like, oh, fucking woot. Now we can like die because the entire point of the movie is once a year, old Deuteronomy chooses someone to like kill and then they come back as another, another animal, another cat uh, for another life or whatever. Uh, but that's 
Like the the, uh, the 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 people have to sing the songs to like to prove themselves as to why why they deserve to like die effectively. It's a bit. It would be a big mood in a different movie, but in this one, it's just confusing. She turns up, uh, and then Ian McKellen's there, and Ian McKellen is introduced. Poor Ian McKellen, Sir Ian McKellen. I think I think he might be a sir. I actually don't know, but he should be a sir. But fuck the monarchy. Anyway, like Ian McKellen turns up, and he's introduced as like this old cat, and he wanders into this theatre, licking his like the back of his hand, and no joke, going meow 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 meow. Like, like the character from uh, Mr. Rogers, like meow meow theater cat, meow meow meow. So he comes on, he sings his song about how he used to be a actor and now he's in Cats or something like that. I don't know, I wasn't really paying attention. Someone at this point, someone in the screening had passed me a bottle of port. I don't know where it had come from. I don't know who had given me the bottle of port, but it was just getting passed around. I took a big swig, I passed it on. Uh, but I was quite drunk throughout this point. I had a mojito and two bottles, uh, two glasses of wine. I still feel drunk. I still feel, I feel like I'm never gonna get over the hangover of this movie. Anyway, we have Ian McKellen's song. He like, the big old like thunderous applause for it. Everyone loves Ian McKellen's song. And then we see, and then we see Jennifer Hudson Cat, who's like, I can't remember, Grim, Grim Grin or something like that. Grim, Grimble Ball. Uh, we see her, she's upset in the street. Nobody likes her, everyone hisses at her because she was like, oh, I think she was old, um, uh, she was uh, the the bad cat, uh, McCavity's like ex. A girlfriend or something like that and everyone dislikes her because of it and she lives out in the wasteland She's outside of the theater as Ian McKellen's doing his thing and she begins singing memory uh, <laughs> There's there's a point in the, her rendition of memory at this point that I think speaks to Speaks to like the movie speaks to the tone of the movie and like the direction of it uh, and how the directors and the writers are D did not give a shit about subtlety, about symbolism, about anything. They took everything literally, and that's why everyone was a weird fucking cat! So, she begins singing this song about how, I don't know, memory, all alone in the moonlight, and, and, and all the lines of it. And at one point there's a line in the song which is something to the effect of, um, as lonely leaves curl around my feet, I stand on my own, or something to that effect, right? And at that point in the song, she looks down and the camera like cuts to a wide shot as a leaf like presses up against her foot. A lone leaf presses up against her foot and then flitters away in the wind. He's like, no, that's a metaphor. She doesn't need lonely leaves. It's a metaphor. It is symbolism. It is imagery. It is, oh Christ, this movie. And then halfway through, Victoria starts to sing. Now, remember, I've never seen Cats. I know nothing about cats. The only thing I know about cats is that it's weird and memory is sung in it. That's it. And the, at some point someone dies. That's literally all I know about cats. But I could tell that this was a new song. This, that this had, was not in the original production. And you know why I could tell? Because it had one decent line in it. Because it made sense. And you know what? I think that sucked. I think that was the worst song of the- it apparently was written by Taylor Swift according to the people who I went to see it with um, and apparently it's like a new song and it was one of the big like g gimmicks for the movie it's like come see cats but we've added random shit that you didn't ask for because I've- frankly who goes to see cats wanting anything? Who goes to see cats wanting so who goes- who wakes up in the morning and goes you know what I'd like to see cats for this reason no no one does that people go and see cats because it's cats. Because it's because there's nothing else. Because there's nothing else to this fucking movie. There's nothing else to this story. It's just cats. And everyone who likes it only likes it because it's cats. And so if you add stuff to cats, it's not cats anymore. It's just it's 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 like you want to go and ride a bicycle, right? And it's a shit bicycle with no seat. The wheels don't like properly like turn when you turn the handle. Like the bell is broken, but it's your bicycle and you love it. And then one day someone says, "Hey, do you want to get on your bicycle?" And you go, "Oh, sweet." And you go to your bicycle and it's just been painted pink and you're like no I that's what have you done to my bike and they're like well it's your bike but we've added shit to it and it's like no I liked my shit old bike this was my old bike I, why have you why have you painted my bike pink why have you put a Taylor Swift song in cats 
in memory the one good song so we then we we have the, the beautiful ghosts and uh scrimble bimble uh, jennifer hudson is like scared off into an alleyway and she doesn't come back for, until like the end of the movie cool 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 so we have that we've got uh, ian mccallan he gets thanos snapped away by uh idris elba who um now goes mccavity when he thanos snaps people uh and when he does when he like snaps uh, McKellen and himself away. There's like an M shadow on the wall that then disappears, which this movie really doesn't ever make up its mind about whether it's, I'm, we're gonna like showcase the world of cats but with a little bit of magic to it, or we're gonna showcase the world of cats with just randomized uh, fucking uh, enchantment and sorcery. It's there's never any consistency, and one of the main issues with McCavity teleporting <laughs> is that throughout songs, other characters teleport. Like for example, in um uh, Rebel Wilson's song, she teleports all over her like kitchen. She's on the stovetop. She's under the table. She's uh by the horrifying child mouse corner, and like she just keeps jumping within the song. But because like we have a character who literally can teleport, McCavity, he can literally teleport, suddenly when that becomes like a plot inconvenience, like, oh, McCavity's gone somewhere and we can't follow him, it, it, it's, it's bizarre because no, we, we can see these people literally teleporting throughout the entire movie. There's one point where, and this is the next song in the, God, there's so many songs. The next song in it is, um, I think actually this is Scrimble Shanks, the Postal Cat, I don't know, all of them have stupid names. I'm gonna call him Post Cat because it's just easier. Postcat turns up and he does tap dancing. And you know what? This is the one good track in the movie. I was like, you know what? This is a fun track. Um, there's this whole scene transition where Scrimble Shank, uh, po post Postcat is uh, tap dancing on a bit of wood and the camera pans around his feet. And then as it pans, we're suddenly on the railways of London and we dis we've gone from the Egyptian now and we're in this entirely new zone and we, the, that we tap dance and then we're on a train and we're singing about how great the railway is and how cool this tap dancey cat is. And in all fairness, he was cool. But we've got these like big scene transitions, these big magical teleportation things. Scrimble Shanks, I keep calling him Scrimble Shanks, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna lean in at this point. Scrimble Shanks, like at one point, flies. Lots of these cats can fly. He f spins in the air like a fucking helicopter and flies up, and then explodes into glitter because uh, McCavity like Thanos snapped him to the magical evil barge where he's been Thanos snapping everyone to. There's a magical evil barge by the way but we'll come back to the barge in a bit because we will get there. So we have um, Scrimble Shanks doing his tap dancing stuff. He gets disappeared. Uh, McCavity, then, no, not McCavity. Taylor Swift turns up doing a god awful British accent, which I think Rebel Wilson didn't do a British accent. So I'm not sure why they made Taylor do one. Whatever. She comes on, she starts singing about how great McCavity is. She throws catnip everywhere. She's on screen for like two and a half minutes. The song's decent. Um, I liked it because it was like a big brass band moment and also because at this point the bottle of port had come back and I and I just like it not from not from the direction I passed it it had gone around the fucking screen people had just like passed the fucking parcel it was almost empty I took a second swig at that point I was buzzing anyway we have her singing about how great McCavity is uh putting all these cats to sleep and then McCavity shows up and goes to old Deuteronomy and says I have <laughs> fucking murdered all of the other cats who have ever sung in this in this movie. I've taken I've taken them around the back of the soundstage and stabbed them several times in the lungs. I took so Ian McKellen out behind behind the back of the Egyptian with a shotgun and with tears in my eyes I said, "You've had a good run." <laughs> Think think of the rabbits, George. Think of the rabbits. Anyway, he turns up and is like, Oh, Deuteronomy, I've killed everyone who uh, has sung in this movie thus far. Except he hasn't. There are like three, four characters that have had songs about themselves that he hasn't gotten rid of. They're even in the scene, but that's not brought up. And then he goes, so as because I'm the only one left who sung a song about himself, um, I am the only one that can go up to the heavy side lair, which is the cat version of reincarnation heaven. And then old Deuteronomy looks at him and goes, no, I will never choose you. 
and then we get reaction shots from all the other cats. Uh, and that's something that happens all the way throughout the movie. And this is something I want to talk about the editing wise. The amount of cuts it has between like, oh, we're going to look at this piece of footwork. We're going to look at this character reaction. We're going to look at this set piece. All within the space of like five, ten seconds. It's bewildering. Like the tap dancing cat bit. I wanted a long shot of the tap dancing. Because you know what? It was impressive cat dancing. Tap dancing. Christ on a... Bike, Christ on a pink bike, why did you put the beautiful ghost song in the middle of memory? <laughs> it, the tap dancing was great. It was like, it, it was impressive. But it kept cutting from the feet to the face to the to a wide angle of everyone to the feet and then to the a different angle of the feet. And it's like the entire point of tap dancing is that you're watching this incredibly fast thing happening. Uh, like uh, in front of you and you're in awe of it But if you keep cutting away and keep artificially speeding it up by doing so by like putting the audience in a state of whiplash It's suddenly the entire point of like fast tap dancing just goes away Like the the impressive factor of it is just lost um, And so we get reaction shots for all the different cats and you can really appreciate how god-awful the CGI is um, Like the, the blending of the faces is like okay most of the time sometimes it's really really bad like i think like dame judy dench like just looked strange like everyone looked strange but dame judy dench didn't look like a face had been sellotaped not sellotaped so i stapled onto a cat so old deuteronomy says i will never pick you you're a cheater and then idris elba goes Rah! and then like thanos snaps her into like the old barge where everyone's been held um, and then says, well, if you're not gonna pick me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill ya! Or something to that effect. And begins to, like, push, uh, Dame Judi Dench across, like, onto this plank of wood. This, uh, this, this the gang plank into the Thames. And so she's on that plank of wood, and then we cut back to the Egyptian. And the magic cat, suddenly, Victoria says, Magic cat, you saved me from the dog that we didn't see, thank God. You could magic Dame Judi Dench back. And Magic Cat's unsure, but he's like, you know what? I can do it. And everyone else around him is like, yeah, Magic Cat. Yeah, Magic Cat. Bring Dame Judi Dench back. And and he and he begins to cast his spell and sings about how he's the cleverest cat of all. And he tries to bring her back. And he doesn't. And that happens about four or five or six times. Like, he tries to bring her back, fails, the entire of the cats go, You can do it, there is no smarter cat than the magic hat cat. Something to that effect. And then he tries, and then he fails. And then he starts singing it, and everyone goes, There is no smarter cat than the magic man cat. And then he tries, and he fails. And it, it's like it's like the, um, the Game Grumps meme of, And then I shot, and then I missed. It's like that, but watching it in real life, and it takes about five minutes. And eventually Dame Judi Dench, like, magically appears behind everyone. But it's like, it's, it's three to five minutes later. She was on the edge of the gangplank. How long was Idris waiting to push her into the Thames? At that point, like after five renditions of there ain't no smarter cat than the magic man. No, Dame Judy Dench is fucking dead. If he could have, if he could have wizarded her up, it would have been a bloated, wet corpse. So she comes back, and then like, and then uh, Jennifer Hudson turns up to the to the Egyptian and comes in, and Victoria like. Uh, like, brings her in and goes like, oh, sing your song, sing your song. Um, and we get one of the funniest, like, reaction shots of the entire movie, where we cut from Jennifer Hudson looking unsure to Dame Judi Dench, who looks genuinely disgusted, genuinely confused and disgusted that Jennifer Hudson cat would have ever dared to come into the Egyptian. How dare you, you stinky cat? You, you rough around the edges, mangy fucking puss. Get out of my theater. Like she looks actually horrified to see her there. And then uh, Jennifer Hudson starts singing memory. Halfway through she collapses. Victoria comes in again with a beautiful ghost song. Twice, twice in memory, they interrupt it to shove in the new bad song that Taylor Swift wrote. Um, and like, and, it, and then after the beautiful uh, ghost thing, Jennifer Hudson, Hudson stands up, the music swells, and we finally get memory. 
It's so easy to leave me. Or however the song goes, I don't know. I was steaming at this point. The port had come back, it had gone. Everything was a cat-shaped blur. Um, but she sings the song. And then uh, our old, old Deuteronomy goes, I pick you, I pick you, Jennifer Hudson cat, to be, to be the one that goes to heaven. <laughs> what, the, what the fuck is the plot of this movie? Say, saying it out loud doesn't feel real. <laughs> So she, so she picks Jennifer Hudson to go to heaven, and Jennifer Hudson gets in a cage. This is the thing, like a cage comes down, a cage with spikes on it and flames around it, like candles, and she gets into this cage and is lifted up uh, past a broken skylight towards the sun. And I, I didn't know anything about cats. I knew that like at some point someone like goes to heaven, but I was watching this and thinking, this, this is a this is a fucking blood sacrifice. It is like Old Deuteronomy has long conned all of the other cats in London into sacrificing one of their own once a year to appease the sun god. It's unbelievable. Like it, the 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 tone of it was so bizarre. Jennifer Hudson also is now just out of the movie. She doesn't have anything after that. She just looks really happy. Gets in the cage and goes up to heaven. Uh, there's a couple of shots of her just like. In in the, in the cage, looking out towards the sun and smiling as she just sails towards it on a big balloon. So she comes out of the skylight uh, and then uh, McCavity tries to like jump. Oh yeah, he like, um, oh, I forgot, I forgot. Uh, everyone on the barge is safe. Don't worry about everyone on the barge because uh, Rebel Wilson saves the day. After uh, old Deuteronomy uh, like magic magics herself away, uh, Rebel Wilson undoes her skin climbs out of her skin and is wearing like, for inexplicably is wearing like a purple leotard under her skin, climbs out of her chains, like frees James Corden uh, and there's a big old fight on the boat uh, and Ian McKellen uh, gets like old evil cockney rat cat man, uh, puts him on the gangplank and goes, I couldn't understand what he was saying. Like, I think he was leaning into the whole, I am an old cat, a bit too much. And at one point just went, how can I get away with just making vaguely old sounding noises and you know what apparently he could and then old evil cat falls into the river uh, and none of those cats ever come back into the movie i think i could be mistaken i was very distracted in the last song by a lot of things and i'll talk about that now so um jennifer hudson flying towards the sky flying towards heaven uh uh old uh, mccavity jumps and grabs the rope that's like dangling from the balloon and he tries to like climb his way up and he uh, goes, aha, I will be the one actually. I'm gonna cheat my way there. Uh, and he clicks his fingers to like, to, you know, teleport himself up into the balloon, which is something that we've seen him do like at least five times in the movie. In fact, after Dame Judi Dench uh, like got magic away, he disappeared himself uh, away from the barge and probably onto the roof of the Egyptian or whatever. Like he's been shown to do this. But for some reason, it just doesn't work now. He clicks, nothing happens. He falls off the balloon, lands on the top of Nelson's column, where he's now trapped forever uh, and will starve to death. Like this, this is the thing about movies that are like, oh, the bad guy isn't dead. He's just trapped in an inescapable prison for the rest of his life with no source of food or water. Like this, it doesn't, like, just because he wasn't, like, immediately killed doesn't mean that his fate is any less of a death sentence. Anyway, so he, like, falls off the balloon, lands on top of Nelson's column, and all the other cats of the movie are, like, gathered around one of the lines of Trafalgar Square and looking up towards the balloon. And they, and they sing about how beautiful it is, how, how beautiful the morning is, uh, how, how much hope it brings you, how you need to believe. But I was distracted throughout the entire of that, like, mini song, because all the while, while the cats are pointing up towards the heavens, in the top right hand corner of the screen, there is a massive neon sign that takes up maybe a third of the screen. There is a massive neon sign on the top of one of the buildings that all the cats are seemingly pointing to that just says Bovril. It just says 
Bovril, it's just a brand of gravy. Every other piece of like advertising in the entire movie is is like a cat pun. It's like, oh, uh, sparkly puss lemonade or or the Egyptian, you know, it's a it's a theater that, you know, the e e Egypt, lots of cats on there. Like, like they were big into cats and stuff. I maybe I hear I hear the rumors that the Egyptians loved the cats. So like Bovril just comes out of nowhere, and I I stifled a laugh. I was like I was trying my best because I could tell there were people behind me who were singing along to memory, and I was like, oh, this is beautiful. You love this track. I don't want to spoil this movie for you. But I was unable to hold it in. Like bo the bovel thing was like my the champagne bottle of my of my uh, tension had been shaken, had been shaken to within an inch of its life. The cork ready to burst, and I was just I had one finger left on it, putting any kind of pressure to stop that from happening. And then Dame Judi Dench turns to the camera for the final song of the entire movie, which is the the the, the big like learning lesson of the movie. And she goes, Well, we hope you've enjoyed our tale and now know how to properly address a cat. And I was, you know, champagne shaken, finger still on it, finger a bit shaking now. It's like, okay, we've broken the fourth wall and we're now, apparently the moral of the movie is how you should probably address, proper, properly address cats. That's not been, that was like the second song. This is why I said the second song was maybe the most important in the entire movie, because that's the only one that even comes close to saying like, this is how we, cats should name themselves. And it's like, that doesn't come up. That doesn't come up. The naming of cats doesn't come up in this song. The first thing Dame Judi Dench says, in t looking into the camera, is something along the lines of, when it comes to addressing cats, there are musts and there are must nots. For example, and then she looks to her left, and then she looks to her right, and then she looks directly into the camera and says, and sings, cats aren't dogs. And I yelled. I, d I don't know what sound I made. I think it was something along the lines of, ah! I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't hold it in. My, my finger slipped. The, the cork came off. The champagne flowed out of the shaft of the bottle, like in like like old old faithful in the in the American Midwest. Uh, an unrelenting, immediate torrent of white vitriol exploded from my mouth. I couldn't. I couldn't hold it in. I couldn't do it anymore. I'd sat through almost two hours of cats and managed to only occasionally stifle a titter. And then I'm told that one of the most important things we were supposed to learn about in this movie is the fact that cats aren't fucking dogs? Fuck off! I already knew that! That's like one of the first things I knew in life when I was first learning to speak and I pointed at my dog and I went, cat? And my mum went, oh, actually, that's a dog. I didn't need Dame Judi Dench to tell me that. I didn't need a movie to tell me that, B Mr. Hooper, you bastard. But that was at the end. That was at the end. Like, effectively, this is what happened. If we like, if you imagine you're sitting in the audience of my screening, you hear this. Cats aren't dogs. <laughs> Cats aren't dogs. And when the entire, like, the ensemble just begins, like, joining in on the cats aren't dogs. Like, it's this fucking revelatory moment. Like, the audience is supposed to be nodding along and going, damn. Cats aren't dogs. Like, right on, dude. I don't know what you just said, but speak your truth. Go ahead. And, and then it cuts to the balloon. And then cuts the balloon going into the sunlight. And I was, I was sitting there thinking, this was bizarre. This was a terrible experience, but it's over now. And then it cuts back to Dame Judi Dench, and she goes, and for the second thing. And I was like, no, no, you don't get a second thing. You blew your load on cats, aren't dogs. You've chosen your hill. You don't get to skirmish to another one. Die here, cats. Fucking die here. But then they go into like, you need to address a cat, like formally and let them do whatever they like. And it's just like, I guess this movie was written by cats because it seems kind of biased in all fairness. And then the ensemble comes in, get cats do whatever they like. 
I don't know why I went into like the um the like that that child's show of like da 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 da, da for that one. I wish they had. It would have broken the mood to be honest. At least I wouldn't have been bored. I was so bored throughout all this movie. I've never I I mean it when I say I've never been like disgusted and bored at something at the same time. I, it was one of the worst experiences in the theater I've ever had. But that's not the end because then it cuts back to the balloon which sails off into the sunlight and I was like, "Ah, oh, there we go." We've had like the actual message, like the cats are dogs, cats aren't dogs thing. Um, that's fine. We've had that. That was like the joke ending, and now we have the true ending. So we watch the balloon sail away, and then we cut back to Dame Judy Dench, uh, still sitting on the line as the bells of London are tolling and all the cats are scrabbling around, and all the and uh, Victoria and Dame Judy Dench like nuzzle each other, and Dame Judy Dench says, "You know what, Victoria? I think you are." A jellical cat, and I, and then and then we cut back to the balloon, which then disappears in golden dust, and then the movie ends. I felt empty. I don't think I've gone to a cinema, gone to a theatre, watched something, and left it feeling like I have less. Not that I know less. Like I've gone and seen movies and theatre shows where I've left it going. I know less than I knew when I walked in. I feel like I need now need to go and I need to experience something. I need to go and I need to do, delve into the research of this. I need to understand what I just saw. With Cat, I feel like a part of me was taken. I feel like that movie reached into me, grabbed something. I don't know what it was, but it's I could tell something's missing inside of me now after watching that film. I feel I feel lesser for having watched that movie. And that, that cat movie, that fucking Hooper cat movie has taken something from me. And when the movie end, when the movie end, when the movie end, <laughs> and then the movie was over. And I left the theater and I was wandering through the empty streets of London because it was 1 a.m. and I needed to catch a bus. And I, I, d I didn't know how to talk about it. I, I, I kept starting sentences with people who had seen the movie with me by going, I think, and then just not finishing. I didn't have anything to say. I didn't know what I wanted to say about this movie. Apart from right now, where I have sat down in front of my microphone and unscripted, uninterrupted, just explained what I saw. I needed to use my platform for good to explain to you in half the time not only everything that happened in this movie but every reason why you shouldn't see it. This was not a movie that was bad enough to be good. This is not a movie that was self-aware enough to be enjoyable from an, un from an ironic perspective. I didn't laugh. I felt no emotion other than fear, confusion and pain watching this film. It was a horror movie. Children were eaten and skin was flayed. James Corden was in it. James Corden was in this movie. Zero out of ten. If you would like to continue to see videos like this or like the stuff I normally make, why not consider jumping over to Patreon.com to join the ranks of the lovely people whose names you can currently see on screen, and who include Adam Gable, an alt-right sleeper agent who gives money to communists, Buka Adika, Anthony Baker, Anthony G. Reap, Basic, Bradley Hutchison, Brian Dunn, Caleb Blake, Chance Beard, Chris DeVos, Corza, Dat Ass is Cash, David Vestal, Dennis Deacon, Drew Pierce, Dystopico, Easy Kyle, Ech Sidian, Elizabeth, Erica Hamel, Ethan Abraham, Flame Consumes, Georgi Layubanov, Hopper Dup, In Response I Bolt Myself, Joshua M. Stefan, Kalia Whithart, Karen Mayville, Kieran Pollard, Kurd Ape Apologizer, Lachlan, Leftist Tech Support, Literally a Ghost That Pushes Over Candles, Linnea, Matty O. Tank 1, Melinda Phantom, Me, Mordella Morana, Nicholas Janish, 
Ornithopter, Papa Titan 14, Ross King, Ryan Morgan, Sasha Evelyn Francis, Silent Celine, Sky Johnson, Solace Ike, Speedy Koala Tragedy, Spooksman, Stingray, Swan Hunter, the lyrics to All Star, Turhan Brace the Third, Vittorio Grace, Vladimir Gorvakov, Xenon, and Zoltai. And thank you to all of my wonderful patrons and to all of you for watching. As always, stay spicy.